Hello viewers, welcome back to my channel Shraddha's Physics. In this part we will see the previous year question of the SSB Physics that is 2022. Here you will see from question number 56 to 65. So the first question that is question number 56 is the electromagnetic field tensor that is F mu nu. It is defined as F mu nu equal to dou A nu by dou S mu minus dou A mu by dou S nu where mu and nu has the value 1, 2, 3, 4 where a nu represents the component of the 4 vector potential and x mu is the space time 4 vector ok if b1, b2, b3 and e1, e2, e3 they represent the x, y and z component of the magnetic and the electric field respectively then you have to calculate what is the value of f12 now from this expression you can see the value of f mu nu is given if I will write F12, then this will be equal to dou A nu in place of nu, it is 2 divided by dou X1 minus dou A1 divided by dou X2. Okay. So, from this you can see from the option, here the options are B1, B2, B3 or minus I2 by C. So, here the correct answer will be the B3 because from this you can see f12 equal to dou a2 by dou x1 minus dou a1 by dou s2. So obviously this is nothing but b3. So the correct answer will be the magnetic field of the z component that is b3. Okay. Now let us see the next question. In a Compton scattering that is question number 57. In a Compton scattering process the maximum energy transport by photon to an electron. Okay, so now you have to calculate the angle of scattering. So for that the angle of scattering is always 180 degree. So the correct answer will be 180 degree. Okay, now let us see the next question. The addition of the two, just a minute. Addition of the two spin half particles will give rise to a total spin off. Okay, you know when there are two spins, it may be off spin or it may be the down spin or the both may be off spin or the both may be the down spin these are the possible cases okay so this both of off spin or both down spin they are the same case but one having off spin and another having down spin is different now for that if you will calculate that is s1 this one is s1 and this part is your suppose s2 okay now if i calculate s1 plus s2 then that will be equal to for off spin I will write plus up and for the down spin I will write minus up then that will be equal to 0 this is one case now I will calculate for this now for that I will write for S1 equal to S1 plus S2 I will write that is equal to for S1 this, this is plus up and this is also plus up so half plus half that will be equal to plus 1 okay and for the down spin also you can see that is equal to for S1 plus S2. This is minus up, minus up whether I will take the off spin as positive or the down spin as positive. This is the same case because the negative sign is just because of to notify that here this is the let me show you when one electron having off spin I am just giving a positive sign and on another having the down spin I am just giving a negative sign in it. Or I can also put a negative sign for the off spin and also the positive sign for the down spin. It is just, it will just give you the direction of the spin. Okay, so here for this case, that is when I will add for the spin down. I can also write this is plus half and this is the same sign that is having the plus half. So 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2, this is your 1. So in the both case, the spin will be 1 and in this case, when they are having the opposite spin one of other down or this may be down spin or this may be off spin so for this case you will get always the zero okay and so here the addition of the two spin half particle will always give rise to a total spin of either zero or one okay it may be off spin both off spin or both down spin or it may be one of and another one is the down spin okay now let us see the next question the number of the components of a tensor of rank 3 in 4 dimensional spaces. You have to calculate the number of independent component actually. So here for the number of component for the 
tensor of rank 3 and the dimension is 4. So here you have to check the dimension power rank. So the dimension is 4 and the rank is 3. So 4 power 3 is your 64. So this is our correct answer. Okay. So the number of components of the tensor of rank 3 in the 4 dimensional space will be 64. Now let us see the next question. This is the direct question. The question number 60. The average speed of an electron in the fast bore orbit of a hydrogen like atom of atomic number z is in units of the velocity of light. So here the average speed of an electron in the fast bore orbit of the hydrogen atom will be z by 137. This is the direct question. Okay. Now let us see the next question. The time constant in an LR circuit. Let me tell you. For the LR circuit, the answer will be tau equal to L by R. So this is our correct answer. That is for the LR circuit, the time constant tau will be equal to L by R. And now I will tell you. For the RC circuit, just make a note. For the RC circuit, this tau value equal to RC. Or that is equal to 1 by 2 pi Fc. Okay. So basically tau equal to Rc. Now for the LCR series circuit when inductor, capacitor and resistor both are connected. So all the three are connected in the series. Then for that case the Q factor here equal to 1 by R into L by C root over. And when LCR are connected in the parallel, parallel connection then the Q factor will be equal to R into C by L root over. Just the reciprocal of that. Okay. So uh, for the RC circuit tau equal to RC and for L LRC circuit or LCR circuit the Q value equal to 1 by R into L by C root over and for the parallel combination of LCR Q factor equal to R into C by L root over. Okay. Now here in the question the time constant for the LR circuit is asked. So here the correct answer will be L by R. Now see the next question. Which one of the following is a universal gate? So here from this option only the NAND gate is given. So this is our correct answer. Or you, you should remember that the universal gate is NAND as well as NOR. They are both known as the universal gate. Okay. Now the next question is how many atoms per unit cell does an FCC lattice have? So it will have the four number of atoms per unit cell. Because if I will consider... A cubic lattice, suppose this one is my cubic lattice and here only the corner atoms first, the corner atoms are placed here and since this is the FCC, so at the face, at the each face, so at this face one atom and at this face there are six faces, so at every face there will be an atom will be placed in, in this way, okay. Now, if I will consider for this corner atom, then for this corner atom, I can attach, if suppose this is another unit cell, okay, this is another unit cell, and also like this, this one is another, and this is another cell, 1, 2, 3, 4, and on the top of this, I can also place some unit cell like this, okay, and also here, I can place another unit cell, and also similarly, on the back side of this, I can also place some unit cell like this. Okay. So there are, this, this one is 5, 6, 7, 8. So there are 8 number of unit cells that can be shared with this atom. That is the atom that is placed at this corner. It can be shared with the total 8 number of unit cell. So here we can say that this atom is present in all the 8 unit cell. So here only 1 by 8th part of the atom is present in this unit cell. Only 1 by 8th part of the atom is present in this unit cell. So for this corner atom also 1 by 8, this corner atom 1 by 8. For every corner atom, only the 1 by 8th part of the atom is present inside the cell. Since there are 8 corners in a cubic cell, so 8 into 1 by 8, so that will be 1 atom is present because of the, 1 atom is present in the unit cell because of the, sharing of the atom for the other 8 unit cell respective to uh, that of the corner atom okay now for the face let me tell you just a minute for the face centered atom let me just erase this part 
Now we will show you. So you can see here for the face set into datum. Okay. For the face set into datum, this one is suppose if I will consider this top one. So only, only one cubic cell can be present on the top of this unit cell. So here only one and this is two. So these are the two unit cell which can be said which is where this atom is being said. So in the first unit cell only half of the part is present and this second cell also half of the atom is present for the face centered atom. Okay for the face atom. So only half of the part is present in that unit cell. So for this atom for this face centered atom also 1 by 2. For this also 1 by 2. Since there are 6 faces so 6 into 1 by 2 that will be 3 atoms present inside this unit cell and also for the corner atom that is 8 corner into 1 by 8 of the atom that will be equal to 1 so 3 plus 1 that is total 4 atoms are present in the unit cell okay similarly for the simple cubic cell also you can calculate for the simple cubic cell only the corner atoms are present since only the corner atoms are present only 1 by 8 part of the atom is present inside this unit cell since there are 8 corner atoms we can say 8 into 1 by 8 so that will be equal to 8 into 1 by 8 that is equal to 1 atom is present in the unit cell and for the body centered cubic cell also the corner atoms as well as inside the body one atom is present so for the corner atom each corner atom is shared by 8 unit cell 8 other unit cell so only 1 by 8 part of the unit cell 1 by 8 part of the atom is present in that unit cell. So for the corner atom that will be 8 into 1 by 8 again 1. That is 1 atom is present inside the unit cell because of the corner atom. And also for the body centered atom since the atom is lies completely inside the body. So only 1 atom is present inside the unit cell. So this 1 plus for the corner atom 1. So that there will be the 2 atoms present in the unit cell. Or we can say that for the BCC lattice, for BCC lattice there are the two atoms per unit cell. So here we have concluded that for the simple cubic cell there are one atoms per unit cell. For BCC there are two atoms per unit cell and for FCC there are four atoms per unit cell. Okay. So this is our correct answer. Now the next question. A crystal with the hexagonal symmetry looks the same after a rotation by so 60 degree will be the correct answer okay for the hexagonal symmetry basically so it will look the same after the rotation of 60 degree since everything is not possible to derive completely so here some of the question i am not explaining here i am directly saying the right option okay so now let us see the next question which of the following represent the dirac delta function so you have to check which of the following function it represents the Dirac delta function. So from this option. So this limit m tends to 0. m by x square plus m square. This represents the Dirac delta function. Okay. So this is all for today. If you have any doubt can ask me in the comment section. Thank you all.